Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads brings you the famous Jerome Kern musical, The Girl from Utah, starring Gordon McRae and his lovely guest, Anne Ayers. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another memorable musical evening is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And tonight, before we get underway, we want to give an extra tug on the whistle. In salute to the more than 5,000 members of the American Institute of Electrical Engineers who are gathered in New York City tonight for the start of their winter general meeting. Several sessions will be devoted to electrical engineering aspect voting. And we wish all the members of the Institute a successful and rewarding meeting. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Listen. Remember that? Why, of course you do. It's the hit song from one of the best-remembered shows in musical history. Ann Ayers and I are going to try to recapture some of the magic of the London theater of 1912. As the curtain goes up on Jerome Kern's enchanting Girl from Utah. Tonight we take you for a while by the lure of a song and smile and lift a careless laughter. Where happiness is at the start. Far from thought of a work a day where the only work is play with not a thought thereafter. The only thought is to be gay. Songs and smiles, the laugh that beguiles our nonsense we know. Forget all the world, let Polly be your friend. Come follow, follow on and all to the land of let's. But our story doesn't begin on the stage of a theater. It begins on a channel boat about halfway between Calais and Dover. I, I say, excuse me. Yes? It's quite a chilly crossing. I wondered if I might get you a lap robe. Thank you very much. I, I don't think so. Uh, forgive me for talking to you like this, but... Well, you look so lovely in this blasted moonlight. Thank you, Mr. Blair. Sandy Blair. Perhaps you've heard of me. I'm something of a stage star in London. Musical comedy, that sort of thing. Oh? Well, won't you tell me your name? Well, for the moment, Mr. Blair, why don't you just call me the girl from Utah? Utah? What's that? Don't you know? Well, I've never heard of it. Is it uh, part of the British Commonwealth? <laughs> no. Well, all I can say is... Thank goodness you're not an American. I can't abide American women. Oh, I know what you mean. All so ugly. Yes. And untalented. Definitely. And completely unlovable. My exact sentiments. <laughs> but you, well, you're different. The Utahites, uh, is that what you call it? It'll do. That's the type of girl a man can fall in love with immediately. But, Mr. Blair, a man like you, a stage star, doesn't this happen to you all the time? Well, I won't deny that I've had fancies galore, say three or four, well, maybe more. I've often thought this one I truly adore. 
different with us? How can we tell yet? Oh, I, I just have to see you again. Why, oh, you're the only bright thing in a world filled with despondency. Well, why are you despondent, Mr. Blair? Well, it's show business, the most harrowing profession in the world. Well, that should be exciting. Well, it is normally, but I've got a new leading lady for my next show, and she's, uh, well, she's American. Oh, you poor man. I, I take it you've never seen her. No, but I shut it. I should be forced to kiss the girl again and again and again. How dreadful for you. For some reason, American women find me irresistible. I have a devil of a time getting rid of them. Mm. I feel for you so deeply. Oh, you're so sympathetic. Wait until I tell everybody in London about you. Now, where can I reach you there? Oh, I don't think I'll tell you. Well, how will I ever find you? Fate will bring us together. But fate is so undependable. I don't believe in fate. You should, Mr. Blair. Fate weaves such wonderful plots. All right, everybody. On stage, on stage now. All ready for first rehearsal. Uh, just a minute, Herman. Where is the so-called leading lady? Uh, she called to say she'll be a bit late. We'll go ahead without her. And that typical American rudeness. We will not go ahead without her. And while we're waiting, I'll tell you all about the most beautiful, wonderful girl in the whole world. The one you met on the boat, Sandy? Yes, you told us. Oh, everything. You wouldn't believe a girl could be so lovely. Yes, you told us, and we don't believe you. Now, Herman, this girl... Say... Hello. Uh, hello, Mr. Blair. Why, Miss... Miss Utah, what are you doing here? Can't you guess? You found out what theater I was in and came to see me. Oh, you sweetheart, you. Look at her, everybody. Isn't she everything I said? You believe me now? Got the cutest little way. Like to watch you all the day. And it certainly seems fine. Just to think that you'll be mine When I see your pretty smile 
makes a living worth a while. So I've got to run around telling people what I found. How beautiful you are They didn't believe me They didn't believe me Your lips, your eyes, your cheeks, your hair Are in a class beyond compare You're the loveliest girl That one I'm certainly going to tell them that I'm the man whose wife one day you'll be. They'll never believe me. They'll never believe me. That from this great big world happen the same way with you? My friends are completely incredulous. And when I told them how wonderful you are, they didn't believe me. They didn't believe me. Your lips, your eyes, your curly hair. Happiest man in the whole wide world. Yes, yes, well, we're glad you're happy, but uh, we've got to get to work. Now, now, just a minute, Herman. Sweetheart, wait for me. Will you go sit in the audience, and I'll get rid of the old buzzard from America as soon as I can. Uh, uh, Sandy. Uh, oh, please, Herman. I'll uh, see. Uh, your leading lady has arrived. Leading lady? Uh, where? Uh, Miss Yuna Vance. Or uh, don't you even know her name? But, 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 I thought you said she was from America. This girl is from Utah. Utah is in America, Buster. Oh, why didn't I ever study geography? We'll return in a moment for Act Two of The Girl from Utah. For folks who love to ski and skate, there's pleasure and anticipation in the sight and sounds of a real snowstorm. But a heavy fall of snow can also be a real problem. Car owners hope somebody will get busy and clear the streets and highways soon. Meanwhile, the railroads are busy clearing their highways of steel. And a hard and expensive job that can be. Preparations begin months before the season's first snowfall. All snow fighting equipment is inspected and put in first class condition. From giant rotary plows that can hurl tunnels 60 to 100 feet from the track. To a full quota of snow brooms, picks, scrapers and rock salt stored strategically all along the line. 
A wide variety of fixed and portable heaters operated by electricity, gas, or kerosene are made ready for instant use in keeping switches clear of ice and snow. Miles of snow fences and snow sheds are erected. Arrangements are made for the quick hiring of large numbers of extra workers and for daily, even hourly weather reports. As a result, when a big snow hits, railroad snow fighting forces, old hands at battling emergencies, go into action without a moment's delay. Their equipment is in readiness, their organization is complete, and the men await the signal that will send them into action. And so when blizzards sweep across the country, making streets and highways impassable, grounding planes, and generally paralyzing transportation, the railroads are usually able to maintain their service with a minimum of interruptions and slowdowns and to take over much of the work of competing forms of transportation. Yes, and remember, while other forms of transportation have to contend with the effects of severe winter storms, a mighty important difference to you, the railroads use their own men, equipment, and money to do the expensive job of keeping them rolling when the weather gets rough. Your local, state, and federal tax money is never used to keep vital rail service running. Now here is act two of the Lawrence and Lee version of the celebrated Jerome Kern musical, The Girl from Utah, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, Anne Ayers. Did you ever hear of anything like it in your life? On stage, the girl from Utah was all sweetness and smiles. Off stage, she treated me like the world's prize icicle. Yeah, who is it? Una, I've got to talk to you. Well? Will you go out with me tonight? Dancing? Don't you get enough dancing on stage, Mr. Blair? You know, why are you treating me this way? Now, wouldn't it be dreadful if an old American buzzard fell in love with you? Oh, you Found know. you irresistible? Please. And then you'd have a devil of a time getting rid of her. When I said that, I didn't realize... Places, please. On stage curtain going up for the polka number. Already? Shall we dance? Before the syncopated rain of ragtime and its noise, there was a dance that still is loved by all old girls and boys. It didn't need pavlova to exhibit it in style. But just for sport, it had the hesitation be a mile. If you will show me how, I'll gladly learn it now. I wonder why they never dance a polka. It's old enough to be as good as new. There is no other dance above it. Now don't you love it? I do. Give me a lively girl who likes a polka We'll drive these modern dances off the floor With one, two, one, two, three, that's the dance of me Why don't they dance the polka anymore? When Grandma was a gay young thing and Grandpa was a boy To hop around the polka was to them a thing To learn it too, to us it seems quite new. I wonder why they never dance the polka. It's old enough to be as good as new. Number. You know, could I could I see you after the show? Excuse me, please. I'm due on stage. Curtain. 
isn't she beautiful, Herman? She is Alice in Wonderland. But I stand here in the wings a thousand miles away from her. You know, the first time you told me about her, I didn't believe you. I look at her in this number, and do you know something? I believe you. Shh. Listen, Herman. Listen. And from the way you talk, I get the impression that you, Paul, must have seceded from the union. You know, I'm going to secede from the show if you don't start being nicer to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Herman, but that's in the show. But, but you're the star. Oh, I can't go on. Not in the state I'm in. State. State? Who the devil knew that Utah was a state? I'll bet that people over there don't know any states in Europe. Now, if I told an American about a flapper from Schleswig or a hussy from Sussex, would anybody know what I was talking about? No! Well, where are you going? Just away, Herman, just away. There she is in sight every night, and I, I can never reach her. When are you leaving, Sandy? I'm going to catch the first channel boat to France. And that's another thing. I'm never going to talk to a strange girl on a boat again. Never! <laughs> Una. It's 
such a chilly night. I, I wondered if you had an extra lap robe. What do you care? I followed you. That's the way we do things in Utah. Yuna, can you ever forgive me? I'll try. Of course, I, I never could stand British musical comedy stars. But then, I, I guess it's different when you happen to be in love with one. Then, Yuna, I, I don't believe it. <laughs> Nobody else will believe it either, but it's true. And when I told Are in a class beyond compare. You're the loveliest girl that one could see. And when I tell them, and I'm certainly going to tell them, I want back in just one moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Dan Tobin and to our entire company. Girl from Utah with a book by James T. Tanner and music by Paul Rubens, Sidney Jones, and Jerome Kern was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? You know, many people may not think of the railroads as a very intimate part of it. But the fact is, every time you buy anything, you're making use of railroad transportation. Lots of it. Miles and miles of rail transportation have gone into making possible the production and distribution of most everything you use in your daily life. In addition, the railroads are important customers for business everywhere, perhaps the business for which you work. Then, too, as heavy taxpayers, the railroads do much to help provide communities like yours with the schools your children attend and with the fire and police protection you depend on. Yes, whether you think of them every day or not, the railroads are an intimate and essential part of your daily life. Thank you very much, Marvin. And now, folks, here again is our delightful guest for tonight, Miss Anne Ayers. <laughs> Anne, you were certainly a captivating girl from Utah. <laughs> it's always fun to play opposite the boy from Syracuse. <laughs> What's on the show train next Monday, Gordon? Well, Mimi Benzel will be here, Anne, to hit the high ones. And we think you're really going to enjoy music in the air. I'll be listening, Gordon. Good night. Good night, Anne, and do us a favor and come back again real soon. All aboard! Friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night, on behalf of the other members of the cast and of the American Railroads, this is Gordon McRae saying good night. <laughs> The Girl from Utah was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can be seen in Three Sailors and a Girl in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Tonight, the voice of Firestone features Lois Hunt on the NBC Radio Network. <laughs>